speak to your designer, um, speak to Netafim, have a look on your spec sheet and compare it to that and compare it to your design description. I've got an example there. Jeremy, what are the key aspects to take into consideration when you're doing evaluation of a subsurface drip system? Well, if, it's, if the grower or the irrigator is to take it, uh, the evaluation, we like to keep it nice and simple and um, pressures and discharges at the extremities of the system, the extremities of the uh, sub-mains and the laterals uh, is generally recommended and these are quite easy tests that the grower should do and should do regularly, should do as soon as they get a new system to make sure it operates to specifications. Uh, and then should do regularly to see if their maintenance programs are being um, are keeping the system up to specification. Mm. And how important is it to do that? I mean, if you don't do it, what sort of effect will it have on on performance? For drip irrigation, is very important, and uh, we've found a couple of dry years, low rainfall, low water allocations, that if you haven't got a system performing the way it should, it shows up very quickly with drip irrigation. You've got smaller wetted areas and smaller root zones, active root zones, and and um, um, uneven applications show up very quickly. What sort of, uh, what could you expect to get? What sort of performance can you expect to get? It should be 95% um, um, uniformity or less than, you know, 5% variation in, in flow is, is what we're after. Um, and less than that preferably for, for high value crops and, and, you know, crops with small root zones like vegetables. But that's what we should start at and we should try and maintain it around that area over the life of the system and that's not um, not uh, um, uncommon. It should happen um, if maintained properly. Right. What and maintenance? What about maintenance? How? What are the important things to consider there? A couple of things are, are flushing um, that that should be looked at. We've been guilty in the past of ignoring that flushing and having systems that aren't designed to provide adequate flushing as well. So, to flush that particles that get through the um, filters is important to get them out of the system. And also injecting chemicals when needed, depending on the problem, um, chlorine and, and acid uh, could be needed as well. Mm. So when you put it into a system, it's not just sort of set and forget. You've got to continually monitor it. Ah, definitely, yeah, yeah. I mean, drip irrigation is a great one for reducing labour requirements, um, but it's not low labour doesn't mean no labour, and there's still these issues that need to be looked at um, regularly.